Hello everybody. A few people have asked me after my last video if it was okay to mirror my videos, since some of them had been flagged and might go down. Well the answer is obviously sure. Mirror all my videos if you want. What do I look like a selfish a pity feminist? Do I look like a dame to you? I'm from the Pirate Bay and YouTube generation, the copy and paste generation. I am a hacker by philosophy. And when I say hacker, I don't mean the steal your credit card type. I mean the open source keep software free and community driven. Caring and sharing with your community for the greater good. Subman USN came up with a nifty way to put someone's statements in a video and make a response, in a way that would not invade their privacy. So as everyone is probably aware by now, the pesky dumbs are flagging people's videos under YouTube's privacy violation clause in the terms of service. I am here to give a primer to how to avoid getting flagged by the pesky dumbs. Also, uh, somebody pointed out that I always appear clean shaven, so I just figured I'd give a little unshaven appearance here so you know what it looks like. And I'll tell you something, darling, you look marvelous. Looks like. So as you'll notice in this uh, first clip, and in all subsequent clips, what I have done is I have masked out the faces of the pesky broad and have also used the sound editor of my video editing software to change the pitch of the voice, change the voice so that it's no longer recognizable as the person speaking. So without further ado, the pesky broads. Hi dames. So earlier today, I took part in a hangout which was supposed to be on the topic of International Women's Day, which is this coming Friday. Now we've criticised it. Unfortunately, I don't know how to put a graphic over someone's face. I am really not that skilled. But I found another solution. You see, if you just move the video image upward, their face will go off screen and that way they can't be identified. So remember, I am doing the video like this to respect their privacy. Hey everyone, so this week we're looking at women in comedy um, and I want to look at some sort of claims about women in comedy that I hear quite a lot of the time. Um, first one, that women aren't really funny. Funny is a subjective thing. If you're going to make the arguments that one sex is or isn't as funny as another, then all you can do is say from your personal observation women are or aren't as funny as men or vice versa. There's no scientific method of determining this other than possibly counting up all the income or bookings of stand-up comedians and figuring out the pay difference between the genders. But of course any time this happens feminists don't come to the conclusion that one gender is better at something and thus pay more, they come to the conclusion that the evil patriarchy conspires to hold women down. I'm not about to name a massive long list of really hilarious women in comedy, not because I couldn't, because there are plenty out there, but because if you genuinely believe that an entire gender is just incapable of being funny, then you're not exactly going to be paying a lot of attention to me right now, saying that they are. Translation. I'm right and you're wrong and I don't have to back my beliefs up with evidence. Because I'm right, because I have a vagina. And patriarchy. Look, if you're going to make a claim, toss out some names. Do you have any idea how many times I've changed my mind on something because people began providing examples? For example, a long time ago a friend said James Hetfield of Metallica was one of the greatest vocalists slash guitarists of all time. I began naming numerous better guitarists and numerous better vocalists. He then said, no, I mean a vocalist that plays guitar. And I had to really think about it. And I confess there are a ton of better guitarists, a ton of better vocalists. But the combination of being both a better guitarist and a better vocalist, I could only name a few. So citing examples and being unable to cite examples means a lot. And who knows someone watching this video might think of a dozen examples, and thus I may change my mind. Examples help. Claim number three, um, that women have only recently become funny and um, this is kind of a recent thing. Um, I'm just, I'm not even going to try and argue that point myself, but I saw a really great quote, um, by Matthew Perry, who plays Chandler Bing in Friends, um, and he was talking at the 2012 Comedy Awards. This year we saw many hilarious performances by women, as well as many idiotic articles from men about how women suddenly became funny. Yes, imagine how great the Mary Tyler Moore show would have been had Mary, Betty White, Cloris, 
Leachman and Valerie Harper actually been funny? If only Lucille Ball, Carol Burnett, Gilda Radner or Julia Louis-Dreyfus had been able to get a laugh. I guess what I'm saying is that this wasn't the year women became funny. This was the year men finally pulled their heads out their asses. Mary Tyler Moore was a comedian? Some of those names I didn't recognize. Carol Burnett, you know I had totally forgotten about her. Yes she was a funny and talented woman. See how examples help to make an argument. And Betty White, I seriously cannot believe as I was sitting here trying to think of good female comedians, I totally forgot about Betty White, she is awesome. Again, examples help. And I disagree that Julia Louis-Dreyfus is funny. She's a decent actress. She delivers her lines pretty decent. But I've never heard her do stand-up. If we're including actresses who can be funny when writers and directors are coaching them and giving them great setups, well then yeah there are a lot of great female comedians. But by that logic there are a lot of great cartoon comedians, you gonna hand Bugs Bunny a fucking award? As for Julia being a naturally funny person in interviews, hell she's not as funny as Kate Mulgrew. If you're a Trekkie, give me a thumbs up for that comment. Even if you hated the Janeway character, Kate Mulgrew is awesome. I have to show you guys these clips of Betty White. Can't blame him for not using computers. No, no, no. But no, John likes to do all his communicating via carrier pigeon. <laughs> carrier pigeon. Does that work? Oh, absolutely. Although, lately we've been having a problem with Sarah Palin shooting them down. No, no, no. <laughs> that is one crazy bitch. <laughs> Now, I'll tell you one thing, if Barack Obama needs more experience, mm -hmm. I could give it to him. Uh, <laughs> I think what I do... All right, but you know what, we're out of time. Betty White, everybody, Betty White. Yeah, I'm looking forward Now, I know that you've agreed to do any, obviously, acting, singing, dancing, but no nudity. Are you drawing the line? No, very little nudity. Very little Just nudity. Just a little, you know, here and there. Just a little here Mostly and there. here. <laughs> 70 years of comedy. I loved when the guy behind the camera lost it and started laughing. At any rate, giving examples of women being funny is probably a much better approach than just claiming they are, take your word for it. Patriarchy. Something I hear a lot of the time when I have these kind of discussions is, oh well there aren't enough women in comedy anyway, so you can't blame me for not knowing about all of this. Um, and okay, so that's not entirely wrong. Um, the comedy genre is completely like, it is vastly male dominated. And whose fault is that? Patriarchy. Um, but you can't use that as an excuse for like being foolish, basically. Um, there is a hell of a lot of women in comedy, um, and there has been for a very long time. Um, the problems are that, yeah, like there are a lot more men, but... So first you say there are a hell of a lot of women in comedy, then you say there are a lot more men. You do understand that, a lot, is a relative thing, right? I could just as easily say there are very few men in comedy, though less women. Thus there are very few women in comedy. To have a lot, and then a lot more, would require a third thing for comparison. But you're comparing men and women. There really isn't a third thing. A reason that there aren't enough women in comedy um, is probably due to the fact that it is so vastly male dominated. Um, it's, it's riddled with misogyny. Um, it's just being a woman is enough to be the fucking punchline. Um, but as long as, you know, it's the guy doing the setup of the joke. So it's male dominated because it's male dominated. Guys make jokes about women, sex with women, and relationships with women. And that's why girls can't be comedians, except of course for the women who do become comedians. Here's an idea. How about women grab the mic and start making jokes about men and sex with men, and relationships with men? If it's funny people will laugh. Finding something funny isn't really a choice, it's either funny to you or it isn't. You can't force yourself to think something is funny, nor can you make something funny stop being funny because it violates some ethics or principles. Look, I'm not racist, and I don't like racism, but I've laughed at racial jokes targeting whites, blacks, and others. If a joke is funny, it's funny. Um, I reckon that a lot of women don't feel safe in comedy. Um, and I'm going to point to the recent Daniel Tosh um, awfulness about that. Um, as an example, um, so trigger warning for rape jokes here, um, for those of you who haven't heard about this, um, he was doing this bit about how rape jokes are always funny because rape is just hilarious, um, and this woman, um, 
decided to shout from the crowd, actually, no, rape jokes are never funny. Um, and so Daniel Tosh apparently thought a really appropriate response to that would be to joke about how um, how funny it would be if she was, that heckler was raped by, like, five guys um, right then and there. Which is fucking disgusting, quite frankly. Oh God, again with the, women don't feel safe. It's the feminist excuse for everything isn't it? Well that and patriarchy. They don't feel safe in tech because they overhear a dick joke. They don't feel safe in comedy because men make jokes about women. They don't feel safe here or there or anywhere. God, how the fuck do we go about making women not feel safe in gender studies classes? Maybe if they didn't feel safe they'd quit going and getting indoctrinated. Also, your example of how women might not feel safe in comedy is flawed. You should have said, women don't feel safe being hecklers. After all, she wasn't a comedian, she was some uptight cunt that was shouting things at the performer and trying to mess up his act. And the comedian responded with something stupid off the top of his head to deal with the heckler. Um, and I think you can understand that things like that might very well be a reason that women won't feel safe going into comedy. Or I think in my opinion there is a lot to be done to make the world of comedy a more sort of woman friendly place. Let me ask you something, why the fuck are women so afraid of everything? Have you ever considered that there is no invisible patriarchy oppressing women, it's just women being too damn cowardly to get off their asses, turn off Oprah, and do something with their lives because they are just far too cowardly? Maybe you feminists need to stop telling men to make every aspect of life a woman-friendly safe space that's all about their tender emotions, maybe you need to tell women to start growing up and acting like adults. You want men to pamper fragile women as if they were delicate toddlers afraid of everything. You know what, I'm not completely convinced that women are so pathetic and that they are so cowardly. And so mentally delicate and hypersensitive that we must treat them like little children. I think those descriptors apply to feminists, not women. I think gender studies classes that indoctrinate women into feminism teaches these women to get in touch with their inner crybaby, live their lives like entitled children and cry like a little girl when they don't feel the big strong male adults have built a safe enough playpen, I mean safe enough space for them. I think normal healthy women can make it in comedy. And it's the indoctrinated crybaby feminists who have been trained to be hypersensitive and afraid of everything. Betty White, I never heard her talk about politics or her worldview but I don't think she could be a feminist. You see, she hangs with the big boys, and the rowdy male comedians, and one-ups them. She was on a games show or a talk show one time with Eddie Murphy, Mr. Foulmouth Sexist Traw as it gets Eddie Murphy, and she said something to him that made him blush. Betty White made a black man blush. That's just how badass she is. More evidence that feminists are just hypersensitive little children who go out of their way to be offended and cry versus how a real woman takes jokes would be this. Um, also, to stop letting misogynistic comedians get away with it, this starts at a basic level, like, don't let misogynistic and sexist jokes slide. Um, with your friend, if your mate, you know, who thinks he's really hilarious, like, gets called out when he makes um, a kitchen joke. Then... So kitchen jokes hurt feminists and make them feel unsafe. Let's see how a real woman deals with a kitchen joke. And, uh... I also want to say that I accept the kitchen jokes with good nature, um, even though this is really the only place in my house where the lighting is decent and, uh, and there's room for me to do this. Yup, real women can take a kitchen joke, feminists can't. Point proven, game over.